Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 16 of my Java Algorithms and Data Structures tutorial. Today, we're going to continue from what we were doing in the last part of the tutorial, in which we focused on solving programming problems. And if you haven't seen that tutorial, there's a link to it in the upper left-hand corner, and a link to all my algorithms tutorial in the upper right-hand corner. Now, if you don't remember, our original goal was to figure out how to print out a tree structure pretty much any type of tree structure on the screen based off of data that is in an array. And we pretty much did it. However, as you're going to see in this tutorial, we're going to fine tune everything so that we eliminate all the problems that came up from our past code. So let's get into it. All right, so you can see here our old tree generation code that we made in the last part of the tutorial. And here I am going to generate the beginnings of what is called a heap. Now don't worry too much about what a heap is, just in general it's like a tree but it is implemented as an array. But don't focus too much on that. In the next and what will be the last part of my algorithms tutorial I will cover heaps in great detail. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create an array and it's going to have what are called data3 objects. And I just use data3 as a name because I used data previously. And we might as well just come down here to the very very end of this and create our data3 class. Now this is going to be very very simple data3 and inside of it it is just going to have a key but as you saw before you can put anything else you want in here the key is just going to help us locate the data and then we are going to create a constructor inside of this and it's going to get past a key and we are going to assign the key for the class to whatever the key was passed in. Very very simple. So now let's jump back up inside of here and all the code in this video is available in a link in the description underneath the video. So let's go in and we're also going to monitor items in the array. And that of course is going to be zero whenever we first start off. And basically I'm just modeling an array. That's all it is and it's going to have a whole bunch of data3 objects inside of it. I'm also going to have a maximum size for it. Create my constructor for this guy and it's just going to receive a maximum size for my array. My array is going to be able to have pretty much be any size and can contain any number of different values. And then, like I said before, our goal here is to take that information and dynamically generate a tree for it. New data3 and then max size. So that's going to set up our array. Now what I need to do is have some way to be able to insert values into that array. And that's easy enough. Public void, I'm just going to say insert and keep this very simple. I'm going to say index and data3 new data is going to be passed into it and then we're going to go heap whatever index they want and save new data inside of it and then since we have another item in my array items in array needs to be incremented so pretty simple stuff now the only other thing we're going to need to do is come in here and generate numbers in our array we're going to need to fill our heap with numbers so just to have this be an automated sort of thing i'm going to generate filled array and it's just going to get a random old number passed into it data3 let's just say random data1 and then I just need to fill this guy up and anytime I need to fill something up I'm more than likely going to use a for loop I less than and I'm just gonna say whatever the max size is and then increment that then I'm going to need to generate some random data based off of the random number that was passed inside of here. So this is going to allow me to determine if I want to have, say, single digits or double digits or what have you. And this tree structure is going to accommodate any number of rows, any number of items up to two digits in length. And what I'm going to show you here is easily going to allow you to generate three digit numbers if you should so want to do that. Now with this random number generation, I'm going to have to convert it to an integer. And I'm going to generate a random number here. And it's going to be whatever the random number was passed in. Once again, I'm going to pass in things like 9 if I want to be able to just generate single digits. Or 90 if I want to pass in and generate multiple digits. And then to insert that, I just go insert i, which is going to be the index and then whatever the random data is random data one don't know why i picked that name just picked it all right so this guy's going to come in here and make sure i change this to filled array just a little typo up there and also change this to this little typo little things that happen when i work out of my head all right so this guy's going to generate random arrays for us and we're going to actually be able to test our tree here and see what's right with our tree and what's wrong with our tree so Let's say just so that I know what is my old tree and what is going to be the new tree, I'm going to generate, I'm going to just print that out. And then we're going to go 
heap two, and I'm just gonna say new heap is equal to new heap two. And let's say I wanna generate 70 digits, or I wanna have a maximum size for that array of 70. And then let's say that I wanna throw in multiple digits inside of this. So we're going to not have single digits, like one through nine or zero through nine. We're now going to have multiple digits like 80 and 90 and 70. What's gonna to happen to our original tree we made before whenever we decide we wanna do that? Well, first we need to actually generate them. Generate filled array, and let's throw 90 in here. And as you saw previously, generate filled array, that's what we just called, and 90 is gonna go in here, and, be, and that is going to generate a whole bunch of random numbers that are between one to two digits. And I'm on purpose doing this just to cause havoc. Now what would happen if we go new heap, print tree, and let's say five. If I'll save it and execute. You're gonna see here the mangled mess that is our original tree code that we made in the last part of the tutorial. And why is it mangled? Well, it's mangled because the generation of indents and then spaces is not dynamic. And that is gonna be something that we need to fix. We need to be able to print out any number of different items and always guarantee that in the last row here, there's gonna be at least one space between all of these digits. Let's see if there's some other things that are broken with this. Let's throw this up to six to print six rows. That's what it's gonna do, and execute. And you can see the problem just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And let's take a look back at all of the different analysis we did in the past part of the tutorial to see how we might be able to fix this. Okay, so this is how we basically figured out how to make a four row tree. At that point, we never thought we would need to make any trees bigger than that, but now we've decided that that is definitely what we wanna do. And let's also think about exactly what's going on here. Now, whenever we were doing all of our calculations, we saw here indent is gonna start with one and then it is going to generate values based off of this algorithm that we have right here. Spaces was totally relying upon indent, starts at zero and then it gets whatever indent has. Then we get down here, first index per row. This is also going to be based off of this calculation but it is going to increase slowly from zero to one to three to seven. So really there's no problem with that. And as we look here, we're also going to see items per row. That also is not a problem for us. Just a simple calculation. And then max index that we're gonna print on each row also is going to be dependent upon two other things that are not gonna be a problem. So by analyzing all of this, I can see that the major reason why we're having a problem printing more than four rows is because indent is not dynamic enough. So I think I can solve this problem if I can generate my indents dynamically each time depending upon the array data that I have rather than being stuck to trying to generate it based off of knowing there's even going to be one, two, three, or four rows. Our goal here in fixing this problem is to make the calculation for indent more dynamic in any way that we need to do it. Another problem that's gonna come up is if we try to print indexes that don't exist, which is definitely something that's going to happen in situations in which we have less items in the arrays than can accommodate all of our rows. So that's another problem we need to think about. And of course, the whole issue in which we wanted to be able to print both single digits as well as two digit numbers. So those are the three things we have to figure out how to fix in our new tree code. So let's get into that. So I'm basically just gonna come back inside of here and I'm gonna copy my old tree generation code because it's almost right. I just need to fix a couple little things here and there. So I'm just gonna copy that, paste that in, and of course I'm gonna have to change this to print tree two. Now remember, I'm doing this pretty much out of my head and I'm trying to keep things simple and easy to understand. So it's going to work in the end, but it's not gonna be optimized. I always worry about optimizing code after it works because if I worry too much about optimizing whenever I'm trying to fix a problem, it just causes more problems. And that's just a personal opinion. Okay, so we know that our major problem is the indent, nothing else, pretty much. Spaces is just gonna become whatever indent previously was, so I see no reason to change spaces at this point in time. We're still going to be iterating through all these rows, so I see no reason to change the fact that the iteration is going to start off at one and then slowly increase. This is the big daddy. This is the guy that we need to figure out how to fix. And if I think about it, I wanna be able to generate a series of digits, which if I bounce over here again, is gonna be seven, three, one, and zero. 
And if we want to take that up to five rows, that means I'm going to need to calculate what comes after seven based off of that algorithm. So just thinking out of my head, I'm thinking, why don't I just generate those numbers inside of an array dynamically and then base whatever indent is based off of whatever the array is. So I'm going to create an integer array and it is going to be called indent. And I'm going to create something called get indent array and it's going to generate all the indents that I need for each row based off of how many rows that I have. So that means I need to get this guy and make it. So I'm gonna come down here and think my way through exactly how we're going to do this. Well, it is going to return an integer array, of course, and rows is going to be an integer. So I'm gonna create an integer array inside of this guy and I'm gonna call it indent array new int and I need to calculate the number of rows because I'm going to need an indent for every single row and then I have to pretty much do the same thing over and over again which what that means is I need another for loop so the zero index i less than the number of rows i increment i and then I need to generate all the values that are going to go inside of the indent array which is going to be i now I know how to calculate indent so I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to copy that code now if we bounce over and actually look at how we were calculating indent before, we were calculating it 7, 3, 1, and 0. So if we want this to be more dynamic, what we're going to actually have to do is calculate 0, 1, 3, and 7, and onwards and onwards and onwards, depending upon the number of rows. And then we're going to need to, like I said before, throw everything into an array. And then something else we're going to need to do is flip the array. So that means that this guy right here isn't going to work for what we want to do. Instead, we're going to need to find the algorithm for 0, 1, 3, 7, and onwards and onwards and onwards. So let's jump over into Wolfram Alpha and figure out exactly how to do that. So now we need 0, 1, 3, and 7. We need that algorithm. And here is our new algorithm. We've seen it once before, this guy right here. So we're going to have to take 1 half times negative 2 plus 2 to the nth power. So let's jump over there and create that. And that, in essence, is what we did here with index to print. So let's take this guy, copy it, jump down here, bounce in here, paste that in there. And in this situation, we don't want to generate what comes from throwing zero into that calculation. So we're going to replace iteration here with plus one. And like I mentioned before, let's jump back over here. We want to start with one. So that's the reason why we're doing that calculation and ignoring zero. Bounce back out. And the other minor thing I want to do is I want to change this to absolute value just to make sure that we always get positive digits from this. And now the other thing that we want to do after we generate this guy is to make sure that it is sorted because we want to go from largest number to smallest number. So I'm going to sort it, indent array, and then what I'm going to need to do is flip it because whenever we call sort, and this guy requires a library, import arrays, there we go. Whenever we sort things, it goes from lowest to largest. We want to go from largest to lowest whenever we're doing this calculation. So I'm going to go indent array is equal to reverse array. And I want to reverse those values. Of course, that doesn't exist, so I'm going to have to create that as well. And then after everything's been reversed, I can send back my indent array. Like I said, I'm just doing this largely out of my head, so I'm not worrying about optimizing things. All right, so we're going to be returning an integer array, reverse array, come in here. That's going to be an integer array that's passed in here. And I'm just going to call this the array because I might want to use this code at some point in the future. Now, how am I going to figure out exactly how to reverse values in an array? Well, I'm going to go integer left index equal to zero. So that's going to put me in the leftmost index for my array. And then I'm going to go right index. And I want to go to the furthest part of my array. And to do that, I just go the array and go, what's the length? Minus one. And there we go. So now that I have the leftmost part of the array and the rightmost part of the array, I just need to flip these guys. So I'm just going to say while left index is less than right index, I just need now to exchange the left and right elements. So I'm going to go int temp the array left index. Now I'm going to be able to take that guy and then store the value of whatever the right array is inside of it since I have a copy of it. And then I'm going to take the right index and store whatever was stored inside of temp. And then the only thing I'm going to need to do at that point is take right index and decrement it so that it moves to the left and then left index and increment it so it moves towards the right. And those guys will reverse the array. 
And then of course after it's done reversing the array, I just need to go return the array and magically I now have a reversed array full of indents. So pretty cool. So let's jump back up into our tree code. We still want to continue iterating as long as iteration is less than or equal to the number of rows that we want to print out. We already have indent, so we don't need to worry about that right now. But we need to figure out what index to print is, which guess what? It's exactly the same as what we previously did. Remember, our problem wasn't index to print or any of these other things. Our problem was the fact that indent was not generated dynamically. Also, items per row, this doesn't need to change, still good. Max index to print, still good, no problem there. Then we get down here where we're going to actually be printing out our indents. Well, to print that out, it's not going to be a big deal. We just need to go and change indent here a little bit because indent's now in array. And to figure that out, we're going to go iteration minus one. Everything else here is perfectly fine. Down here where we're generating which keys and which spaces to print out, this has absolutely no reason to change either. However, remember we need to protect in the situation in which the array isn't full and we try to print an index that doesn't exist. That would be a bad thing. So we're going to say that we're only going to be allowed to print keys and spaces and so forth as long as L is less than the number of items in our array. And that's fine. And also remember that we wanted to be able to print not only single digit numbers and keep everything lined up, but also double digit numbers. So let's just come in here and do that. And one easy way to do that is just to go string and format. And what I'm going to decide to do here is actually put in leading zeros, just because that's the first thing that came to my head. And to do that, we're just going to do this. So that's going to guarantee that there's two digits at all time. And if it's a single digit, it's going to put in a zero. And then we just take this guy right here and throw it in right there. And everything else is dandy. And the spaces do not need to change in any way either. However, remember indent now is an array. So we're going to go iteration again, minus one, and save that to spaces. We're still going to increment iteration. And we're still going to have a new line in here for a new line to skip to the next row to print it out. And now based off of all that, remember pretty much all we had to do is fix indent. That's it. So let's come down here and see if it works. Then if we bounce down inside of main, and here I'm just going to throw in new tree, and let's go and see what it looks like if we try to print six rows, even though it didn't work in the past. And I'm also going to come in here, throw that in there, and then change this to our original print. Okay, let's see what happens. Well, you can see this is the hot mess for our last tree that we created. And here is our new tree. And you can see everything lines up beautifully for the entire tree right there on our screen. And just to make this a little bit easier to see, let's change this into a five, change this into a five, file save it, execute. Again, this is a total mess, and this is nice and neat and beautiful and exactly what we wanted to do. So there it is, that is how to work your way through a pretty cool problem. And at the same time, we were able to generate some really cool code for analyzing trees for future projects. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.